Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, we'll be counting down the top 10 legendary rocket launchers in Borderlands 3. These are the weapons that hold the most grunt, like a pig, but when if they oinked, things would explode. This is a list of the most powerful heavy weapons in the game, and I'll be explaining what each one does, how you can get them, and where they suit best. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already, or even follow me on Twitter. Don't forget to check out the other weapon class countdowns if you missed them, and let me know what your favourite rocket launcher is in the comments below, and let's crack into it. We open this countdown of the top 10 legendary rocket launchers in Borderlands 3 with the Iron Cannon, which can come in every element and belongs to the handsome jackpot DLC. It can only drop and drops every time from the Fabricator Mark II, who you fight way out here at the end of Jack's Secret. The Iron Cannon was the original Big Chungus launcher, the game's first truly broken weapon before it was nerfed. That nerf didn't touch its damage though, but it did touch its ammo consumption, where nowadays it consumes 6 or 7 rounds per shot, with the Time 2 variant netting you the best damage to ammo ratio. It fires deadly plasma beams that grow in power the longer you hold down the trigger. It's a precision launcher hitting crits consistently, and it's capable of producing explosions over wide areas. It's mainly a bossing launcher due to that extreme ammo consumption, but Moes can use it just fine in the mobbing arena. If you're not Moes, you won't be able to mob with it for very long without some regen, but its bossing capabilities make up for that. Time now for the Hive, a launcher manufactured by Torg. It can only come in corrosive and radiation and can only drop from Princess Tarantella II, who you fight around here in the Splinterlands. The Hive is a living, breathing gun, firing robotic nests at the cost of 4 ammo per shot, which house an explosive secret. After travelling a short while, the nests hover in place as they unleash a wave of deadly ordnance in the form of 13 mini homing rockets, which seek out any nearby enemies. It's a weapon that does it all on its own, just position those nests within sightline of your enemies and the hive will do the rest. It's a fantastic mobbing launcher that will turn the tide quickly in your favour. Like a lot of launchers, it's great with the Infernal Wish, which sees you summon a swarm the likes of which never have been seen before on Pandora. It has something for every bolt hunter, explosive power, elemental flavour, and you get all that in a nice homing package. Moving on to the Reiner, an always radioactive launcher that can only drop from loot type enemies. They come in all different shapes and sizes and you can get one quickly by farming thieving jabbers in the Trial of Instinct. Forget the hippos, the Reiner is as hungry as a rhino, consuming a mammoth 8 launcher ammo per shot, but it tries its best to make it worth it. After fully charging it fires two radioactive orbs which fly through the air connecting elemental beams to nearby enemies, slowly draining their health. When the initial orbs explode, large bursts of energy are sent through each beam, crippling the enemy they were connected to. It's very similar to the base game Lump, but in legendary form, and coming in fixed parts, which means you'll only be farming for anointments. It's best when not shot directly at your enemies, instead above them, so the orbs can latch on to as many people as possible. There's no doubt it's a powerful weapon, but its power doesn't justify its ammo consumption. It's best suited to Moes who doesn't have the ammo problem, and can supercharge it all the same. For others without ammo regen, it's good for the 7 or so shots you have with it. Time now for the Freeman, the best Atlas launcher. It can only be obtained by defeating the Warden, you fight around here in the Anvil. The Freeman is the launcher you'd get if you specced into tech over explosiveness. It fires a single rocket at a steady semi-automatic pace, which like grandma, must be guided to where it needs to be. That's because each rocket you fire will follow your crosshairs up until impact. No longer will enemies be able to roll out the way of your attacks, just reposition your aim on their face, 
and it'll blow to pieces all the same. It's incredibly refreshing and enjoyable too. Each rocket is a journey that you play a key role in from start to finish, often ending in some heavy damage. You can even abuse its unique effect on Zane with a racer by charging its rockets through critical spots before circling them back round and detonating them inside your target for some unbelievable damage numbers. Funnily enough, you can even guide rockets from Amara's ricochets which just adds to the fun, and an elemental anointment such as next two mags will go a long way to raising its damage. Up next we have the Major Kong, a weapon that can come in all the flavours. It belongs to the Psycho Krieg DLC, only dropping from Psycho Reaver, who you fight in Bolt Hala. The Major Kong does what launchers do well, and that's deal high damage, but its projectile pattern makes that slightly hard to achieve. It fires wobbly missiles, either one or two of them, depending on the variant, which consume two or three ammo. That flight path is something you'll need to get used to if you want them landing in those critical spots, but oftentimes you don't need them to. After unleashing its payload, the rockets explode on impact before launching another from the expanded cartridge. While mobbing, those secondary rockets will seek out nearby enemies, but while bossing, they'll fly straight into the only one that's there, raising its damage further. For maximum damage potential, you'll want to charge it up, which will cost you more ammo, but why should that matter if one shot's all you need? The x2 variant is great if you don't have an infernal wish, but with one the single shot damage is higher on the base version, and an action skill in splash damage anointment is best overall. Now it's time for the Globetrotter, an elemental launcher that doesn't fire rockets. You can only get one from defeating the squad to the invincible, you fight at the end of the Guardian takedown. The Globetrotter circumnavigates the borderlands, dishing out damage, firing either 3 or 6 blades per shot at the cost of 1 or 2 ammo, overheating the more you fire. The blades it fires form a wall of destruction as they tear towards your enemies. On impact they don't explode, rather they tee up for another hit, launching themselves into the air and slam dunking back down on top of your opponent not once but twice. It epitomizes the term Blades of Glory, embodying the spirit of Chaz Michael Michaels as they cut into your enemies like skates on an ice ring. It's a great weapon on all Vault Hunters, especially thanks to its high fire rate and minimal ammo cost, but it does make for almost guaranteed death. Set yourself up with a Rustler Zane in an immunity build and you can do some seriously crazy things without worrying about the Shadow of Doom. Double splash rolls on your Hustler is peak, but radius is really all you need, and you can even get that on your artifact. It is incredibly powerful and amplifies it even more, creating a weapon that is not only unique, but extremely deadly. It must be someone's birthday, because it's time for a Yellow Cake, a weapon exclusive to the Cartel event, which can be activated at any time from the main menu. Of course, you can get one from Joey Ultraviolet and his underbosses, but you can also get one from Fishlap and Tyrone Smallums. The Yellow Cake only ever comes in radiation, but that's okay, because that's the best all-round element. It deals extremely high damage with equally high splash damage radius, and only consumes the one bullet per shot, but you can even get a times 2 variant, which is definitely best thanks to its low ammo consumption. Its projectile pattern is to thank for its wide damage arc and high damage, as the initial projectile splits off multiple times during flight, resulting in 4 times the boom when they impact. It can take some getting used to, but when you have it down, the yellow cake will be tastier than ever. You can boss with it and mob with it across the Vault Hunters, no matter who you play as, you'll get a lot from this gun. Perhaps none more so than Zane who, like with the Globetrotter, can abuse that projectile pattern and eraser to do some pretty crazy things. There's a lot of other launchers that abuse a rustler, like the Nukem or Prima, you just have to go searching for them, but the Yellow Cake and Globetrotter are amongst the best. This gun doesn't need to break the game to be good though, serving as a fantastic launcher that is both strong and easy to handle.
Up next, the Kick Charger, an elemental railgun that is exclusive to Arms Rage, dropping anywhere there, but it does have an increased chance to drop from this chest room. The Kick Charger is what the Iron Cannon was before its nerf, and then some, like if Gearbox forgot about the broken gun they added 18 months ago, and added it back in, reskinned, and better. Like the Iron Cannon, its power increases the longer you hold the trigger maxing out at an additional 300%, but unlike the Arm Cannon, you can slide to avoid the charge time completely, and its energy bolts travel through enemies. That slide mechanic makes it match perfectly with the Toboggan, and then again with Zane, specced into Violent Violence and Violent Momentum. It's a match made with Kevin, and Kevin's a top-notch blow. You don't need to be Zane to use this gun, those piercing rounds and incredible damage enable each Vault Hunter to see their single shot damage peak. With the Infernal Wish, Toboggan and an action skill in Splash Damage Anointment, the perfect foils. Only consuming the one ammo a shot is unreal and allows you to comfortably down everyone in sight without ever running dry. It is a little disgusting, but hey, disgusting can be beautiful. Moving on to the Plague Bearer, a peak elemental launcher. It is best farmed for by targeting the Warden. You fight around here in the Anvil, but only if you're on Mayhem 6 or higher. The Plague Bearer is the quintessential mobbing launcher, afflicting everyone with massive amounts of Scarlet Rock. I mean, damn it. Send its orbs into the heart of your enemy's territory and watch as chaos ensues. It consumes 3 ammo per shot and must be charged before firing but the wait is more than worth it. From its barrel comes a spherical orb charged with elemental ignition. During flight it's circled by smaller merv grenades which break off once they sense an enemy, overpowering them with an onslaught of explosions. It's not only deadly during flight but after impact as another volley of merv grenades joins the party. It'll carve a path through the strongest of territories, destroying everything in its wake. It's one of the best mobbing weapons in the game, possibly the best one, and you can even boss with it too, as long as you position its projectile correctly. Before number 1 shows its face, let's cover some honourable mentions. First up, the Mongol, a bladder launcher that can come in all the flavours and only drops from Funk and Sloth, you fight around here in Conrad's Hole. The Mongol is essentially broken tech, but Vladov got away with it. It fires a single rocket that can't take the heat, fragmenting into a dozen more during flight, which makes for an expansive damage cone your enemies won't be able to avoid. Damage increases the longer its projectiles travel, making heavy rain on Amara a no-go, and seeing maximum power burst from medium ranges. It never gets old seeing a cluster of rockets engulf your enemies, followed up by another and then another. It's a great all-round launcher made even better by consuming just the 2 ammo per shot. The last honourable mention I have for you is the Tunguska, a kinetic launcher, and by that I mean non-elemental. It has an increased chance to drop from mincemeat who you fight around here in the droughts after completing the quest Skag Dog Days. The Tunguska, I would say, is underappreciated. It's not a gun that you think you can get high damage from, but you can. The key really is in picking up that times 2 variant and boosting that mag size, which will allow you to pile on those stickies. After stacking them up, trigger that reload to see rockets launch into the air before exploding and dealing massive damage. You'll want a next 2 mags anointment that targets the health bar you're up against for the best results. On the mobbing field, it works well too, just with less stickies required, and although you have to work hard for some good damage, it is there. Number 1, we're here, but where is everyone else? Oh look, it's the Backburner, a top tier legendary. It can come in all the elements and has an increased chance to drop from the Agonizer 9000, although rarely, who you fight around here in the guts of Carnivora but it can drop from the Trial of Instinct on true trial difficulty. The Backburner's power all stems from the Vladov name, allowing it to fire powerful elemental orbs rapidly, which never give your enemies room to breathe. 
They cost 3 ammo per shot, which is kind of on the low side, and are definitely more than worth their weight in ammo. After impact, a black hole opens up, which will suck nearby enemies in, but the real show comes in the form of arcing nerve grenades, which rain down, dealing the bulk of its damage, with each one more powerful than the last. Because of how they arc, they often hit criticals, and one shot is plenty enough to down big bosses. Where this weapon can be abused the most is on Moe's with redistribution, allowing her to recoup ammo as it expends, to have her fire at that incredible automatic pace seemingly forever. A cloning maddening tracker will help with that and an infernal wish will double that already crazy damage. Its strength is bossing but the barrage it summons makes it great while mobbing too, covering large areas with each foul swoop. All vault hunters will see bosses crumble before them with it in their hands, if only I had one for fighting Godwick the Grafted. So that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned of the top 10 legendary rocket launchers in Borderlands 3. If you did, consider dropping a like or subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one.